most impressive. Greetings Jedi, it's time for another retro game playthrough, walkthrough, long play, whatever you call them. Had a lot of fun with the last one, Super Star Wars, the, the first playthrough that I did. And it's time to do Super Empire Strikes Back, which came out in 1993 for the Super Nintendo. And this game is insanely hard. So it's been a while since I played it. I gotta start with the easy level on this because I'm just gonna get disintegrated Boba Fett style and we get the opening crawl and it's so important to start these games off with the long time ago graphic and the Star Wars opening crawl it's really uh, just as much a part of the vintage trilogy experience Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. It is a tar dark time for the Rebellion. Although the Death Star has been destroyed, Imperial troops have driven the Rebel forces from their hidden base and pursued them across the galaxy. Evading the dreaded Imperial Starfleet, a group of freedom fighters led by Luke Skywalker has established a new secret base on the remote ice world of Hoth. The evil lord, Darth Vader, obsessed with finding young Skywalker, has dispatched thousands of remote probes into the far reaches of space. And that's interesting that they have, uh, it's like a yellow and orange text instead of just straight yellow. A little hard to read in some, some places, especially at this point. Uh, very pixelized. Amazing music in this game. I would say this game is... Even more fun than the than the last one. More challenging, that's for sure. The graphics are just a little bit better. And uh, a couple of new, really fun elements added into it. You get to be in the Falcon cockpit in one level. Of course, the snow speeder battle. And there's Mode 7 in effect. The, the Star Destroyer flying right at you. And just taking a moment to do a little cinema to uh, have the probe droids dispatched on Hoth, setting the stage, which I like, instead of just jumping right into the action. And here we go, jumping right into the action. So this time out, Luke Skywalker is in his X-Wing costume. I guess that's the one they decided to go with, because if he's going to wear one outfit for the whole game, this is his... Yeah, he was wearing it when he was in his snowspeeder. Uh, it wouldn't make much sense for him to be wearing his Bespin fatigues or his Dagobah outfit here. His Hoth outfit would make sense, but his Hoth outfit wouldn't make sense fighting Darth Vader. So, uh, it's good. It's his X-Wing costume is very associated with Luke, I think. The lightsaber has better control than the last time. It looks better. And it also has a new feature where if you push down... It's a shield. Now, <laughs> enemies can still push you into things, like those spikes there. This this planet is filled with spikes. But it's nice that if you have something charging you or stormtroopers shooting at you, you can at least put the shield up and get a moment uh, to breathe and think of what to do. That's a great little voice clip we have there. And we got a Tauntaun. Man, they do smell bad on the outside. Echo 3 to Echo Base, come in. There's a meteorite that hit the ground near here. Want to check it out, it won't take long. And look at that snow. That is beautiful. And we're on a Tauntaun. How awesome is that? And he's making the noise. Like, as you walk, he makes that meck, meck, meck. That's awesome. Now, you can put the lightsaber away. You don't have to just use the lightsaber and use the blaster, which is a lot more handy when you're on a Tauntaun. The uh, lightsaber is too short range to be effective on a Tauntaun. Just keep blasting. Interesting contrast to the beginning of the first game where you start off in the desert. This is just as desolate, but 
the cold kind of desolate. And these spikes on the ground are incredibly hard to jump over, to shoot, to trigger them, activate them. Man. It just never ends. Oh, we got a blaster upgrade. Good stuff. Alright. Booting along. Whoa. Almost fell off there. I'm sure there's some spikes down there waiting for me. Alright. This is uh this is not too bad. There is a lot of stuff going on, but on the harder difficulty levels, forget it. Thermal detonator. There we go. It's nice to actually be able to... Oh, super heart upgrades. It's nice to be able to notice some of the cool stuff going on here. And those are lasers. Those are probe droids. Here they come. Gotta get off of here. I cannot jump over those ice spikes without getting stabbed by them. It doesn't look like those probe droids are dropping any goodies either. We still have a look up and look down feature, which helps when you're making leaps of faith. Whoa! That was close. We dismount and enter the cave. All right, I'm going to be using the shield a lot in this level. Because there is always something coming at you. Now, there's a... There's a spot here I remember right, right off the bat. Um, if you jump just in the right spot, there's like a, a gust of wind, like a jet stream. There we go. There's a sweet spot, and uh, it'll take you up into these blaster upgrade. Awesome. Into these little hidden caverns, caves up here. Uh, it's kind of like doing a force jump up there, which you actually do get later on in the game. There are upgrades... Where you get to use... Oh, ho, ho, ho. I need this gun. In this level. And then we got our first look at a Wampa. There... You gotta watch out for everything in this game. Like, the monsters. There's spikes. You take a wrong turn. Oh! I was close. I thought I was heading straight for spikes. Bats trying to push you... All over the place those wampas can actually freeze you so there's another one when you're frozen you're frozen for a few seconds and you have to just wait to thaw and while you're frozen they can swipe at you they can push you into like this frozen big trouble big trouble in little hoth oh awesome that's what i needed Right. Whoa! No! That was close. That should have probably been the end of <laughs> this particular play, but uh, s sometimes there's a glitch. And things that should be the end of a turn aren't. So I got very lucky there. Just by, uh, again. I can't make this jump. There we go. Everything is slippery. Everything is trying to mess your jump up. Yeah, even on easy level, this is just crazy hard. Need another one of those. And we go back up here. There we go. I keep hitting that one spot up there. Gotta pull to the side. Just looking for hidden stuff there. And 
Is there anything? Yep. Yeah. Uh, blaster upgrade. I'm never too keen. It's the same types of blasters in this game as in the previous game. And I'm never too keen on giving up that heat-seeking blaster. Uh-oh. Unfortunately, there's no way to block that freeze blast of his. Even with the lightsaber. We got a boss battle. Again, very similar to the first game. Similar music. Life bar. Oh boy. So there's a pattern to this guy. You got to... Ah, there we go. You gotta jump over his breath. And watch out for the claw. I guess this is like a super wampa. Kind of lost the uh, rhythm of that for a sec. Takes a lot of... Uh, Cracker Jack timing <laughs> to use a Jack Burtonism. Oh, finish him off with the lightsaber. There we go. How's that for hero pose? Whew! It's just a second level, man. Alright, back on our Tauntaun. And got our Whoa! Shoot my Tauntaun. It's an accident. These these ice spikes that pop out of the ground, they're like stalactites. Just unnecessary. They do so much damage. They're hard to avoid. Very frustrating. You, know, you basically just have to keep running and blasting. You gotta keep your blasting button down. Alright, we got another cave to go into. This is funny. I'm trying to get off the Tauntaun. He keeps jumping back on it. Let's try that. There we go. Oh boy. Another Tauntaun up there, or uh, Wampa. And oh, we got a drop in platform here. It's uh, it's not enough that the Wampas are trying to claw you, but they also get to freeze you. And is that a tunnel up there? Looks like it is. Whoa! Awesome. And we got a heart that we don't really need. wonder if there's something else up there. It's close. I really need that, but I want to go back up there and see if there's... Oh! That looked like a extra life that dropped in there. Just for a second. Oh, that was a close one. Okay. Some bats coming at you. Dropping down. Drop down here. Whoa! That was close. Let me just uh, get my lightsaber. Oh, there's another tunnel up there. Does it go? It looks like it goes even further up. So, let's see if I can, yeah, I never learned how these work. There's another level to it, but I think you have to get it from the very beginning. You can't just, there we go. I don't know what was up there, it's hearts. Dropping back down, making our way over. How big is this cave? Yeah, 
And I'm at the point where I just want to get this done with. I, uh, I don't feel the need to do too much exploring. It's nice that there's this extra little uh, boost you get when you do the flip. The flip jump. So you can jump or you can flip jump. Back up here. Shields? And a heart, it looked like. Wampa. Even these little bat-like things can do quite a bit of damage to you if they just keep pestering you. There's another air cave. This all is starting to feel very repetitive. Looks like I picked up another extra life up there. Shields will help. And another air chute. Power blaster. So I think I've got the, uh, the strongest uh, of the blasters now. Watch out for those electric eels. But the thing about this game is everything, everything is always respawning. So even if you get rid of something, it comes back within, within seconds. Well, <laughs> this game definitely is the game version of the movie Empire Strikes Back because the first Star Wars movie was all fun. The second Star Wars movie was all business. All challenges and... Uh, can we get in there? Awesome. So Luke still... I haven't mentioned it. Luke still has his slide from the first game. This is definitely a lot more... Challenging. Uh-oh. And I think we're near the end of the level. Oh, pushed me off. Got him. There's, yep, there's an arrow saying you're almost done the level. Oh, that time I did. I was able to recover. Just looking for some extra stuff over here. And I smell boss battle. What do you think? Well, we got a leap of faith over here. Oh boy! Awesome! <laughs> a little bit of tobogganing going on here. This is awesome. Again, just varying up the gameplay a little bit. Being able to do that little slide there. Get you some speed. It's cool. And, oh, that's too bad. It looks like the beasties uh, got the best of my tauntaun, taun, or uh, maybe he ran away. But since I've got the full... Oh, that's not good. The floor is giving away. Since i got the full blaster, I think I'm just going to run and gun with that thing. Probe droids following me, and they just, they never stop. Just keep, uh, boss battle. Whoa, that's the, uh, it's a supersized probe droid. destroyed it, but the music is still going. Oh, we got another one of these tobogganing levels. Trying to just pick up as many points as possible. Oh, that's not good. I 
feel like there's another boss to fight here somewhere. I really like the idea of going into this water with all those electric, electric eel things. There's another pro- whoa. He's big. Uh, to borrow a line from Jaws, we're gonna need a bigger blaster. Like, that thing is enormous. It's taking a lot of damage, though. There we go. Oh, no, what? Thought that was it. False finish. Holy smokes. Echo Station 3TA, we have spotted Imperial Walkers. We've got to hold them until the transports are away. The primary target will be the power generators. All available pilots to their snow speeders. I feel like the text transcribed from the movie is a little more accurate this time out than the previous game. Oh, cool. This is awesome. We're in the rebel base. Uh, the Imperials have infiltrated the rebel base. Whoa. So all sorts of stuff dropping. These creepy spider droids. Alright, uh, here's another upgrade that I forgot to mention. I mentioned it during the first game. And how much I wish it was in the first game. You can run and shoot at the same time. So you've seen me doing it, but I haven't pointed it out. And that makes a big difference. It makes it so much faster and effective to be able to run and gun. Even though I'm not doing much of it right now, but... <laughs> it does help. All right. I, I have to blast every one of these boxes. You never know what you're going to find in them. I feel like the slide is better in this game, too. You get a lot more distance with it. Because the force is with young Skywalker. So... Everything is trying to kill you in this game. Things are falling from the ceiling trying to kill you. At least on easy level, uh, the debris, the shrapnel isn't trying to kill you. I think that would take this from being fun to very frustrating. And another little variance in gameplay. A little... It's not a speeder bike. But it's similar. A little need for speed here. In a way. And it conked out. Oh yeah! Snow speeder. And I love that they put the little animation in there of the character actually jumping into a snow speeder. And this is my favorite part of the game. And probably a lot of people's favorite part of any Empire Strikes Back game. To be able to fly around. Hoth. So, similar to the land speeder level of the first game, I have two counters. Nine probe, dro probe droids and nine bikers have to be destroyed before I can move on to the next task. And I'm trying to remember if I have... Oh, I do. There's my tow cable. So the shoulder... It's a little tricky to control. A biker. It's also hard to, to get those hearts. There we go. We got two probes and eight bikers left. The 
bikers are very fast and maneuverable, so I think with those guys, all I can do is just try not to smash into them. Five bikers left. I'll just smash into another one. It's effective, but it takes a bit of life away. Two bikers left. Love the music right from the movie. It just, it, it felt at the time like you're playing the movie. Destroy five ATST walkers. What does that sound? It sounds like walkers. So we have to blast, we have to blast these guys. Did I get one? I think I did, he dropped a bunch of hearts. Whoa. Yeah, they, they are tough. Sometimes you have to make a couple passes. There we go. There's more and more of them showing up. Not too good at aiming at that last one. There we go. Uh-oh. Smashed right into him. I'm low on life here. Luckily that walker. That walker dropped some and I can't I can't get it. Yeah. Well, just by accident I picked that one up. I've I've gotta get some uh, some life power up here. There we go. Uh five ATS AT eighties. So I'm gonna have to do the uh, tow cable trick. One ATST left. Where is he hiding? He's right there. He's on a hill though, so he's hard to aim at. Whew. Where is he? There he is. Come on, come on. Okay. Filled all our life up, got rid of the ATSTs, and now we gotta do the ATATs and like they said in the movie, that armor is too strong for blasters. So we have to do the tow cable trick, and I've seen this done in a lot of video games. And I gotta say, uh, this has always been my favorite. That no other video game has ever captured the fun, the intensity, and the feel of the tow. Right, we got him. Kaboom! Bunch of hearts dropped. Yeah, I love this this game's version of the tow cables. I'm in a little bit of trouble here, though. Those hearts would come in handy if I can get them. These guys are too close together. Okay, let's try this. It is it is really. <laughs> Really difficult to do this because you gotta really press hard on the control and then let go and then press hard and let go. I think I got another one. It's kind of like in the movie, you don't know if you got him until you turn around and see him blowing up. Awesome. Can't seem to get my life bar back up. But it, it is very, very touchy. I try to get him from the other direction. And it's good that you can hear that that bong sound, which tells you that uh, you've completed a successful pass. I got two ATAT -AT walkers left. There's one over here. No point in even trying to shoot them. Oh man, they're almost side by side. That's not good. Oh boy. It's starting to get crowded on this battlefield. It's one. Two. And like Wedge. One more pass. I got him. Kaboom. One left. Did 
I get them? Yeah, I got them. One. Two. Awesome. These little biker guys are annoying. Fly toward last walker. Uh, okay. Where is he? Right here. And what am I supposed to do? Whew. I guess this is the part in the movie where Luke takes one down by himself. Oh, cool. So, this is similar to when he was on the little speeder bike thing. You get to actually be in a snow speeder. It's awesome. And this is years before this became the norm in video games where characters could jump into vehicles. Um, one of the only games I can think of from back in that era was Master Blaster, where you could actually jump out of a vehicle and control a character on, on feet. I'm taking quite a bit of damage here. Whoa! Alright, where's that walker? There he is. It's one of his feet. So, uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm reminded by the words of Uncle George when he is talking about how his, all of his movies have similarities and it's like poetry. It rhymes. So, climbing this um, walker reminds me of climbing the Jawa Sandcrawler in the first game. It rhymes. Oh, cool. So we're in the walker now. Oh, that's awesome. So you can uh, use your lightsaber as a shield and make those Hoth snow troopers throw the bomb, which uh, bounces right back at them and blows them up. Is that a, oh, that's some sort of a shoot doorway. I think it'd be quicker if I just run with one of these. And even though my health bar is full when I'm getting some of those hearts, uh, I can't help it. It's just, I need those <laughs> so much so often that when I see one, I instantly go for it. Whoa! This is, uh, this walker is very similar to that sand crawler. It, it looks much uh, smaller from the outside. It's very roomy. Awesome. You can use your lightsaber on these things too. Blast their shots back at them. Big hearts. I just know the, uh, yep. The second I turn the lightsaber off, one of those big sentry guns is gonna show up. Really use 
use a health power up here. Ah, I just got one. Thermal detonator. And you, uh, your life bar goes down really quick here. Oh, that worked. And uh, this particular boss, there's not much to him. You just deflect the shots back at him. Well, that was easy enough. Imperial troops have entered the base. Give the evacuation code signal and get to your transports. I'll find the princess and get her out on the Falcon. Awesome. We get to play as Han Solo. So unlike the first game, you just are Han. You get to keep Luke's gun though. Oh, we got the sweet Han rolls. They're back and like Luke's slide, it feels like you get more distance with Han's roll. And the characters do have little animations if you don't move them for a while. Han does that cool little blaster spin. Shoot these boxes up. Whoa. Blaster upgrade, which we don't need. And this is some sort of a moving platform, I guess. Um, one of the things that they've added in this game is bombs. So in the top right corner there, you see zero. Since Luke has force powers in this game, to give the non-force users, like Han, uh, something to do with that particular button, uh, Han can throw bombs, which is incredibly useful against certain end bosses. And bombs! Oh. So, I'll be hanging on to those bombs for the end bosses. And the music is so good in this game. That was a huge advantage that this game had over a lot of other video games. Um, video game music can be great. Oh, I accidentally threw one of my bombs. I was trying to throw my thermal, thermal detonator. Um, like Super Mario Brothers. A couple upgrades there. Mario Brothers had great music. Zelda had great music. But this was another level. This. John Williams wasn't composing music for video games, but uh, when you're making a Star Wars video game, you get to have John Williams music. And it sounds really, really good too. It's not just a, like a pale 8-bit version of the themes. Whoa, what is this thing? Ouch. That hurt. It didn't take long to uh, take my life bar down. That's the thing about this game, no matter how good you're doing, within a few seconds, uh, everything changes. Beautiful. 
nice little detail the thermal detonator uh, burns up the ground too. Something I haven't noticed actually, you can shoot the ground in some parts here and it leaves a, a blaster burn mark. It is impressive, that's awesome. This is another very maze-like level like the caves. Every time I get to a dead end like that, I think well, there's got to be a point to it, and it's for the hidden stuff. Got to be getting near the end here. Uh, which way? of upgrades. Whew. Nice to have those shields every once in a while. It's awesome. Oh! I thought that was an end boss. It's just a really big droid. And the bombs will come in handy if I can figure out how to th throw them. Oh, that button right there. So it's the uh, same button as Luke's uh, lightsaber button. Oh boy, that's bad. Gotta get rid of those things. I would love to uh, throw some bombs at this thing, but the plasma blaster is probably just as powerful and more more accurate too. Bombs. Oh, that's... See how fast that can happen? You just step on one of those... flame things and, uh... your life bar is cut in half. we got here. Oh, this thing again. So, um, the uh, third game would come out um, the following year, Super Return of the Jedi, and it's very similar to this one. And uh, I kind of um, compare it to the Streets of Rage trilogy on Sega Genesis. Uh, Streets of Rage 1 is awesome, incredible music, best of the series. Streets of Rage 2 was such an improvement, so much more to do compared to the first one. And then the third one felt like it should have been huge and epic, and it, it wasn't. It was like, it was okay. So the third Super Star Wars game, it's fun, I like it. It's okay, it's better than okay, but it definitely doesn't feel like as big an improvement from Empire as Empire was from Super Star Wars. I guess 
you get that in a lot of properties, movies, video game series, when you have, uh, when you've put three out. Whew. Awesome. It's very hard to keep topping yourself over and over again. I'm still looking forward to playing that one, though. Especially, uh, with all of the extra new force powers Luke has. Flying through the Death Star, and the Falcon is Lando. going through this rebel base here. Feels like it's taking a long time. I thought a third thermal detonator might reveal some hidden goodies over there, but it didn't. More bombs. Maybe I should use my bombs more often. Might get the chance very soon. Like those lightsaber health bar upgrades. Shields are good. More shields are even better. Bombs. Huh. I've got a bad feeling about this. Oh boy. Yikes. Use up some of those bombs. Going through them like a hot knife through butter. Awesome. On Solo just took down an ATST single handedly. It's not the end of the level. Oh, Princess Leia! And she's not happy. <laughs> she's got that you've got some splaining to do look. On this bucket of bolts is never going to get past that blockade. This thing's got a few surprises left in her, sweetheart. Oh, and we're in the cockpit of the Falcon. Awesome. So, what are we doing here? We're shooting asteroids? Nope. I'm shooting TIE Fighters. This is awesome. So we got a taste of this at the end of the first game when we're in the X-Wing cockpit. There's a little radar in the bottom. And you can see bogeys on your tail. And you gotta try to get them in front of you. This is awesome. There wasn't much freedom of movement in the X-Wing cockpit for the Death Star trench run. Look at this beautiful asteroid belt. Okay, I got I got work to do here. I gotta stop sightseeing. What other... Uh, no, every single button is just shoot. So, uh, doesn't look like any of the other buttons do any controls. It's just a standard uh, cockpit shooter. I got him! I got him! <laughs> I'll try not to get cocky. Oh, I'm off course. Nice little reminding arrow. This tells me to stay on target. I got nine enemies to go. Oh, gotta go down more. Am I I'm flying into an asteroid field, just like in the movie. Never tell me the odds. I feel like something should be happening here. Is there... Yeah, we got another one. You have to just kind of go back and forth to... Uh, to get those TIE Fighters off your tail. They're much faster than the Falcon. Uh, in terms of dogfight or spacefight. So... 
Just by doing this, you'll get them to overshoot you. Got six to go. And uh, I just noticed my shields are still doing pretty good. And we got the music from the movie, from this part of the movie, the asteroid scene. Ouch. And we're getting a lot more asteroids. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. There's lots more asteroids showing up. I gotta... I gotta get through these TIE Fighters. Because... I'm gonna get... Smashed to bits. One left. He's on my tail. Where is he? Got him. Punch it. Awesome. Meanwhile, in a different part of the galaxy, there's nothing wrong, R2, just setting a new course. We're not going to regroup with the others. We're going to the Dagobah system. Awesome. R2, where are you? So we have crashed on Dagobah. And we have to find R2-D2. And it's so peaceful here. <laughs> and I feel... Is this... Does this hurt you, this dripping? I'm standing right under it to test it. There's no music going on. It's very relaxing. The, uh... Oh, did you see that? I picked up, uh... I got a, a force bar in the top right now. So the force powers are building. And that's Yoda's theme. It's very relaxing. While lots of different things are trying to kill you. <laughs> There's another force bubble. And so some of those are force powers and some are like force energy. Stegobah's Wow, the thermal detonator didn't uh, kill off these things in the water. Man, this is this is a really nice. I mean, there's still tons of stuff trying to kill you, but it's it's a nice change of pace after how intense the Hoth levels are. More force. Definitely don't want to miss getting an important force power. And um, now that I've got more than one force power, if I can just find a place where I can train my force powers <laughs> without something trying to kill me. Oh, these guys are on Dagobah too. Some spiky things. So, uh, let's select button. Uh, it takes you to the force menu, and then you can choose with the shoulder buttons either heal or force elevation. So force elevation, I've got a little bit of force here. To use it, you just push up. And you can levitate. And then heal is self exp Oops, sorry about that, R2. And heal will also heal you. There's our buddy R2-D2. He, uh, he ended up worse in the movie, being swallowed by a weird Dagobah gator. R2, there you are. Are you alright? Next time you be more careful. Now all we have to do is find this Yoda. So, nice introduction to Dagobah. Just a simple little level looking for R2, but now we look for the Jedi Master. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't seem right to be just jumping around and blasting things randomly, but that's how you... Whoops. Oh, there's one of those Dagobah Gators. 
That's how you find things in this game, just by blasting, blasting around. I have no idea where everything would be. But we're going to need that elevation for certain things, like getting up there. That sure helps. Wonder how many are there? It's a pretty big bar. I'm hoping that if I miss them here, that they'll eventually um, become available. Oh, that thing left some sort of ad. Whoa! What is that thing? Huge. And they're tough, too. Oh boy. They're, um, they're far too tough. That sucks. They take all that damage and then all they give you is one tiny little bit of life. So we're looking for Yoda. Some more force stuff. Now, this is a relief. Um, when my life bar starts to get really low, it's nice that I can just use the force in order to replenish a little bit if I'm just not having any luck finding hearts. Doing okay for now. And uh, the levitation is also very nice because one of the most frustrating things in the game is missing a jump and you die. Now he's got like a parachute. So if you are heading towards some spikes, you can just give it a little bit of a levitation like that. Shield is handy. So we're starting to act a little bit more like a Jedi. Probably uh, isn't the type of training Master Yoda would like to see probably want to see more of this. And there he is. Master Yoda. Wars not make one great. You wish to become Jedi? I have trained Jedi for 800 years. To become a Jedi takes the deepest commitment, patience, and the most serious mind. A Jedi's strength flows from the Force. Feel it, you must. Life creates it, makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. You must feel the Force around you, everywhere. Do or do not. I think these Dagobah levels are a big reason why I included this game on my uh, top five all-time video games list. Um, those first levels are really intense and annoying after a while. Just too much going on. This is a really important breather and it goes for good movies too. Great movies aren't just non-stop action. They give you a chance to catch your breath, to think about some of the stuff you've seen they give you something to think about, period. So, uh, you know, this isn't really a thinking game, but I appreciate, even though it's still blast everything and run and jump, it does not feel as intense as those uh, Hoth levels. Uh-oh. The screen is moving on us. This is strange. I think uh, I need my lightsaber here. The uh, floor is bumping all over the place on us. There's some force. It's kind of funny that you can pick up this glowing green container filled with the force. I wonder if it's filled with midichlorians. Okay, I'll stop now. <laughs> really weird surface. It's like a 
watching a Paul Greengrass movie. It's uh, it's strange that the the screen is scrolling, because uh, all of the rest of the game is go at your own pace, go where you want. There's no timer, time limit like in the first game. That's another thing I appreciate that they got rid of from the first game. Uh, you can just walk around and do whatever you want. Uh-oh. Yikes! And I am... Oh my goodness! I didn't realize that uh, the gameplay doesn't stop when you're trying to select your force powers. So... Yikes! I might need some force health. How do I use it? I don't know how to use my my force health. That's that's an issue. Yeah, I, I don't know how. Well, how do you? Oh, there we go. It's one of the buttons I haven't used yet in the game. Um. And that is a relief. There we go. I think I'm going to start blasting this guy. That'll do a lot more damage, hopefully. No, he's tough. No, well, that knocked a piece off him. Lost another piece. Chopping bits off now. It's only got, I think, one. Looks like his face. Still got a pretty full health bar. And there goes the face. We can just start slashing. One thing you can't do while you're running is switch your weapons. And you can't slide here, you just drop down. Because one of the controls in the game to drop down a level is the same controls as, uh, as sliding. Sliding and dropping uh, down a level. Uh-oh. This is actually going to be a close one. I've been kind of messing around here, but... I'm very close to buying it here. This is ridiculous. Got him. Holy smokes, I can't believe how hard that was. Whew. If that doesn't make you a Jedi Master, I don't know what will. Han, I thought you knew this Lando. That was a long time ago. I'm sure he's forgotten by now. And that's even funnier if you've seen the uh, fantastic Solo, a Han Solo story, as I call it. Oh dear. Cloud City, and we get another kind of little bit of a breather. Beautiful Cloud City with the relaxing music playing. Very nice. Ooh. Watch out for those things. Man. I'm trying to push you off. Oh boy. Alright, let's see if I can make this jump here, and it's a little trickier with Han, because no Jedi Force Levitation. But he does have that double spin, which gives you a little boost. Oh man. 
And Han also doesn't have Force Heal. So it is a little more challenging with him. It's interesting when you get comfortable with Luke and having all these force powers and you're forced to use a guy whose main power is just how darn cool he is. Oh, bounty hunters. So we're looking for Lando. is uh, not a very warm welcome for a dear old friend. Yeah, sometimes there's just too much going on. It's just crazy. It's, it's like... You can't shoot that thing, apparently. Um, the, the new game system had so many capabilities, they just... Wanted to throw everything, oh, at you. Can't shoot those. And sometimes maybe they overdid it. Uh, so after having played this now for a little bit, uh, definitely feels, the controls feel better than the first game, tighter. More precise. The graphics are a little bit better, but I like how um, similar it still is to the original game. That was one of the problems with the Streets of Rage games, that the graphics improved so much in the second game, sometimes it makes it a little hard to go back. Smokes. That guy's huge. Oops. Some weird elevators here. And the running and shooting is really coming in handy here. It's not fair having these giant dudes gang up on you. Whew. Oh, missed. <laughs> this, I remember, I remember this uh, the first time I played this game. Uh, how long this particular jump takes because every time that thing comes down this door opens and that guy's there to push you off <laughs> so this can be quite maddening <laughs> here we go Giant floating droids are freaky. Oh, gross. The bounty hunters are coming out. These big guys just freaked me out the first time I played this game all those years ago. Especially that sound they make, because they look like giant bugs. They kind of make bug-like sound. It's down here. IG-88. It's interesting he's not a boss. It's just, uh, just another robot. We got a gun over there, which we don't need, but why not? These big guys again. Anything over here? I feel like this might be a dead end. Yeah, there's nothing there. 
Time for some sweet Han rolls. Little Sonic the Hedgehog action here. Did, uh... Is this just one big loop? Feels like this is one big loop. I think I zigged when I should have zagged. Okay. Let's try this. Oh, that looks new. are tough. Um. Oh, that's a jump. Uh, even though this is Han Solo, I suddenly feel like Indiana Jones in The Last Crusade. It's a leap of faith. Alrighty. Only the penitent man shall pass. Awesome. Those bombs seem to go through those shields. Anything up here? Doesn't look like it. Skip all that silliness back there. Come on, Lando, where are you? This is a long level. It feels like everything in this game is long except for that one level where we had to find our two alrighty man it's amazing how much of this comes back and plus, I mean, uh, playing through the first game is training, uh, tightening up your reflexes. And then this is, uh, like I said, very similar. Ooh. Looks like this has been going on for quite a while. Those IGs are really tough. Kind of feel like I'm stuck in a loop at this point. Is this like, uh, is there a trick to getting to the next point or boss battle? Yikes. Blasting. Some sweet Han bombs. It's got one little part left. Is that it? You never know when there's going to be a false finish in this game. I think that was it. Oh, what have we here? <laughs> there's Lando. And I love the animated cape flowing in the wind. That is awesome. Why you dirty double crossing no good swindler? Han, something is wrong here. No one has seen or knows anything about C-3PO. He's been gone too long. Probably got lost, Leia. Come on, Chewie, let's go find him. I think we get to to finally play as Chewbacca the Wookiee. Awesome. I was wondering when we get to play as Chewie. Man, these Ugnaughts. Stop by, oh, lava. 
So I think this is another one of those one wrong step and that's that's the end of the whoa level for you. This is very similar to the interior of the sand crawler level. Yikes. Yikes. Trying to avoid the No, I don't remember if you die right away if you uh are retired. <laughs> retire a life if you fall into the lava or if you get a chance to jump out because it's just a little bit of damage but I don't feel like putting that to the test it's one of those things if it happens it happens oh freeze ray so the wampas aren't the only thing that can freeze you in this game and that's interesting Chewie has a uh... A spin attack. Look at that. I totally forgot about that. Oh boy. Okay, buddy. Awesome. That's a cool, uh... That's a cool attack he's got there, and plus it replenishes. So that's handy. Oh no! Well, that answers my question. They give you a chance to get out of it. Thankfully, it's not like... I don't know, maybe someone played that first game and went, we have got to uh, not do this again. With the uh, instant lava death. Uh, how do you get up there? go. Love that spin attack. So another nice little thing they did to try to match Chewie up with Luke's power. Hope I'm not just going in a circle here. I think I am. Am I? Life bar is starting to go down here. And this is starting to feel like a loop to me. Whoa! What's happening here? I think I just would not go. Well, this feels like a longer climb than the last time, so I th think I'm on the. path here, but I'm starting to feel ganged up on here. I get rid of that blaster. Doesn't look like you can shoot those. Gotta shoot these things. Ah, there we go. Now they're destroyed. Now I got to get rid of this guy. That uh, life bar is a bit too low for my comfort. Need every heart I can get. Let's see if we can look up. There we go. Awesome. Got that guy. Could really use some hidden hearts here, but. Doesn't look like it's in the cards. I think I need to jump on. <laughs> he, he growls if you leave him alone too long. I just can't hit these things for some reason. There we go. get this life bar back up. It's just... Oh, there we go. Is there another one? Nope. Just 
blast and everything in sight now. I guess those things don't... You can't shoot them until they open up. Maybe that's the deal. Keep on blasting. Oh! Who's that? Okay, that's much better now. Whoa. Well, what do we do here? We just make a jump, I guess. Boss battle. Oh boy. And me with my health bar not all the way up. Gotta get rid of these guns. Taking damage now. It's a false finish though, he's still got a life bar on him. Pushing you into the lava. And 3PO should be around here somewhere. There he is. Luckily, C3PO grabbed Chewbacca with his super droid strength and saved him from going into the lava. Phew. Oh, this looks like the carbon freezing chamber. This deal keeps getting worse all the time. Oh, that's Lando's line. So we're in the carbon freezing facility. We've got all sorts of things trying to burn us and freeze us. Whoa. Big claw. I guess that's what uh, encloses itself around Han Solo in the movie to freeze him. Oh, frozen. I really like using that freezing effect in this game. I should be quite well protected if I survive the freezing process. That'd be funny if that was the, the pose that <laughs> Han Solo had in the movie, the fetal position. <laughs> Boba Fett takes him to his ship and have him hanging in Jabba's palace in the fetal position. <laughs> Trying to kiss his own butt goodbye. <laughs> Shields. Dodging flames and claws and yeah. Really love the animation of Han Solo, where he's got that one hand back, and you can get a good look at it now that I'm frozen. It's such a Han posture. Oh, I think this is just a pit. Yeah. There are areas in this game, though, where if you fall in, you will lose a life. So you have to watch where you're jumping coming up, I think. Around here. Got those bottomless pits, which I think this is one of them. And these little guys flying around are a real pain too because you can't shoot them until they open up and they never stop. They just never stop. I think if you fall down here it's you gotta start from your last checkpoint. And uh, like the first game this game still doesn't really have save points or checkpoints. Uh, they don't well, they don't grenade action there. They don't um, take you right back to the beginning of the level, but you don't get to save your progress as often as as desired. Uh, the third game, Super Return of the Jedi, does give you more save points, actual like save markers. Frozen again. Better thaw quickly. Extra life, awesome. And there's a lot of hidden stuff in there. Uh-oh. 
thought I just might have fallen to my doom there. Shoot these blasters. These uh, freezing vents. This is a long level, just like everything else in the game. Uh-oh. Fetal position, Haunted Carbonite. It's the wrong color, obviously. It's supposed to be more of like a grayish brown. Oh! Whenever I go hurtling uh, into the unknown, I just wonder if that's the end of the turn. And these uh, little rolling guys aren't giving off any hearts. So, they're taking life and not giving any, but one of these claws should replenish my life bar now. I dare say these levels are all just a little bit too long. I guess they wanted you to get plenty of bang for your buck on these. Oh, I can't. I can't let this stormtrooper get away. There we go. Got him. Look like there's two different ways to go back there. You go this way, or is this just the way I came? That's just a dead end. Luckily in this game, there aren't that many dead ends. That was one of the things that I really disliked about Dark Forces. I love that game, but there would be times where I would just wander and wander for a long time trying to find where the right way was to go. And you hear that little sound. Um, that's a signifying that you've reached a new marker or a new save point, I think. If I'm remembering that right. These guys again. Uh oh. Ugh. Close one again. These guys aren't a good thing to fill your life up on because they tend to take more life fighting them, then you get back from them. They're incredibly annoying. Oh, boss battle. Oh boy. Just gotta keep blasting at him. I think this gun is powerful enough that I'm gonna throw some grenades at him too. Now every time I beat one of these bosses, I'm expecting a false finish. I look like a big evil carbon freezing chamber. It's funny that they, uh, in, in the first game they had the tractor beam be an enemy and then the carbon freezing chamber. This carbon freezing facility is crude, but it suits our needs. The test on Solo proves it. He is still alive, encased in carbonite and in perfect hibernation. Solo is all yours, bounty hunter. You may take him to Jabba the Hutt. Prepare the chamber for our new arrival, Luke Skywalker. So that's it for Han Solo in this game. And we get one more level with Chewbacca. And I was just thinking that it's nice that we get another level with Chewbacca. But what's interesting about this particular scenario is... Um, Chewie is racing to save Han from Boba Fett. Almost bought it there. And, and they've got this... More freeze ray. Nice, relaxing <laughs> Cloud City music playing. This is a uh, really 
difficult level because of all the jumping. You can fall to your doom. And Chewie isn't exactly the best character to be using for intricate jumps. I feel like this is a this is a good level for an autosave, and then you get this stuff. This kind of like it's not enough that that's a tough jump, but the platform <laughs> is going down. It's really annoying. Another little chime signifying we reached a save point. Love that spin of his. We're getting close to the end of the game here. And this guy is trying to block my... Whoa! Oh, come on. What is he doing? It's tough, too. It's really, really annoying. I hope he doesn't... Oh, he respawned. Are you kidding me? Man, that's annoying. Like, these jumps aren't hard enough. You got this guy trying to pull you down. Plus, he's really tough. Oh, I'm getting out of here. Luckily, Chewie is short enough to... duck those guns. Hope I don't see another one of those guys again. That's really annoying. Alright. Another save point reached. I don't think I can blow these up. I'm shooting them. Oh, boss battle. It's Boba Fett! Oh, rocket firing Boba Fett. <laughs> Vintage, uh... Oh, he's got a freeze ray, too. Vintage Star Wars uh, Kenner fans will... know all about that rocket firing. He shouldn't be that tough, but he's... He's got the freeze ray. So he got away. Oh, slave one. Holy smokes. That thing does a lot of damage. Again, this is a fruitless venture, kind of like Han going through the carbon freezing facility. You're fighting this thing, but uh, you know you're not going to win. And we rendezvous with Princess Leia, who isn't looking pleased. Meanwhile, back on Dagobah. Luke, you must complete the training. You must not go. Only a fully trained Jedi Knight with a Force as his ally will conquer Vader and his Emperor. If you choose the quick and easy path, as Vader did, you will become an agent of evil. Be patient. Don't give in to hate. That leads to the dark side. Vader is strong. Mind what you have learned. Save you it can. So awesome. Luke races in his X-Wing to the, cl uh, the, the Cloud City uh, on Bespin to rescue his friends. It's nice that we get a few cinemas in between. Oh, and we get the X-Wing flying level. This is awesome. I totally forgot that this level was in here before the final level end of the game here. And it's, it's very similar to the second last level. Oh, cool. Second last level of uh, the last game, the Death Star attack. And this is a cool uh, little feature, too. When you go through the clouds, you can't see your uh, status, your life, the number of cloud cars you have to destroy. I think you just need to keep moving. This is, this is overwhelming. Holy smokes. It's crazy. These guys are pretty much innocent. These are Lando's peeps. It's not like these are Imperials. Oh, this is not good. It's 
taking too long to get these hearts. Well, I got a full life bar. We got, we see the Cloud City in the background there, as it was referred to in the uh, cinema. Oh, this is brutal. Not not fun, to be honest. Not fun, really. I don't know what that was. That sound R2 was making. I just, I can't refill my life. I can't get those hearts. Look, there's a bunch. Okay. They're really hard to get. This is really tough. Alright, seven to go. These guys are really tough. Feeling the pressure now. Plus, the music is a little more intense than it was before. I cannot believe how far away these hearts are. It's taking forever. Like, this is supposed to be an X-Wing. Five cloud cars to go. And I've said it quite often during this playthrough. I'm going to say it again. I cannot believe this is easy level. This is absolutely insane. Okay, we got four to go. Cloud City is getting closer and closer. I'm just gonna start firing blindly my uh, proton torpedoes. We got two to go. Seems like this X-Wing has unlimited uh, proton torpedo. Photon? Photon or proton torpedoes? Let's get the two mixed up. One Star Trek and one Star Wars. One cloud car. Left to go. Got it. Alright, head towards Cloud City. Just gotta keep swerving because these guys are crashing into me. Young Skywalker coming to save the day. Whew! This is a tough game. Luke and R2 arrive at Cloud City, unaware of the danger that awaits them. The Force is with you, young Skywalker, but you are not a Jedi yet. Oh, that's so awesome. The voice and then the lightsabers igniting. That's cool. I think we're in the home stretch here. This looks like the um, the area that Luke and Vader dueled in. And this is really cool to be able to interact, to fight some of these things that, uh, that Han has been dealing with and Chewie. And now, whoa, red. Red Storm Trooper, or Hoth Trooper. A force power up there. Guess using the blaster would be a little bit faster on these guys. are starting to, uh, oh boy. Whoa! Speeder bikes. Yeah, this is 
I gotta use my, uh, my force elevation because luckily, if you miss a jump with Luke, you can use the force to stop yourself from plummeting to your doom. I know that voice. This feels just like in the movie. It's Vader! Whoa! That's awesome. Now you gotta remember, this was one of the first times, maybe the first time, that you actually got to fight Darth Vader in a video game. And you're having a lightsaber duel with him. You can hear his breathing sound. Oh, the flashing, that's awesome. That's really cool. There's quite a bit of technique here. That's really cool that uh, you can parry his shots, you can block them, slide behind him, use your speed to your advantage just like Luke did in the movie. So awesome. He's taking quite a bit of damage. So am I, I guess. And uh, if I try to use the... Oh! <laughs> Just to show you, if you try to use a blaster against him, he will deflect. There's no point. Phew! Okay. That's round one. You actually have to duel him a couple times. And I need some more of those force power-ups. Because I don't want to be jumping around here without some force elevation. I wonder if I have enough. Oh, I don't. Well, I'm going to try going back up here. I'd rather uh, take the roof right through the hole. <laughs> How about that? i got to hold my look down button. Next time I try that jump, uh, this one, there we go. So we're looking for force power-ups, hoping there's some more up here. Because I don't want to be facing Vader without those. Okay, home stretch. Oh, missed all those. We'll just go through here. There's one. Awesome. Get some more of those. What a hero stance when he's in his block position. Whoa! A little mess up there. I was uh, using the wrong force power there by accident. I got a bad feeling about this. It's my shield is not allowing the Okay, I gotta change my to heal. Getting overwhelmed here. Too many things blasting at me. Going up. Life back up a bit and put it back on elevate. Nope. I do need to fill up my force power though. And uh, when those things blow up, we do have those. I don't know what you call them. 
Oh. Almost got pushed off the cliff there. Awesome. One more of those. So this is an interesting... Oh! Idea. That, uh... This game is based on a movie that doesn't exactly have a happy ending. So how do you do a video game that's fun but doesn't actually let you win? Because the good guys do lose in the movie. Duel Invader again. Uh-oh. So the technique to fight him is you get a good swipe at him when he lands, because he does jump around a lot. If you try to get too close, though, uh, he will get you, like he just got me. You just have to be patient. Let him keep taking swipes at you. Okay, I'm stuck. There we go. Oh! Swung the wrong way. Health boost. Takes quite a while. It's uh just like in the movie, that constant breathing is unnerving. Uh-oh. Oh no! Through the window! <laughs> just like in the movie. Uh-oh. I'm falling. I feel like I might need my elevation. This is just a point-grabbing part right here. Grab as many of these Jedi symbols as possible on the way down. They really stretched that Vader duel out. So we faced him twice, and I believe the third time is the last one. Red. Hoth Troopers, that's wild. So that's, uh, that's interesting that you can't deflect with your lightsaber while you have the shields on. Oops. Really loving this elevation force power. don't want to use too much of it up because I feel like I'm going to need a full force bar for that third and final duel with Vader. Yeah, sometimes you just have to you just have to take off, eh? <laughs> to use a Canadianism. <laughs> you just gotta leave. Keep playing the game. You'll be there all day. That's not good. I'm almost out of force. And we got another level. It's Darth Vader. And luckily, I have a full force bar. Unfortunately, these are the only two force powers I was able to find in the game. And this is going to be the most difficult duel of all of them. Because this time, he's using the Force. To throw objects at you like in the movie. Oh, here we go. Just basically have to go into guard mode. Deflect. 
Ouch. I remember the first time I played this game to... It's a good thing you can't get pushed off that little cliff there. Uh, I would try to get two swipes in. Oh, it worked! Just because this game is so long and the duel is so long, but sometimes you run the risk of him sneaking a shot in. Ouch. There's got to be a better spot to fight these things from. I'm getting you from underneath. Love those effects. See if uh, I can fend these things off better over here. Seems to be working a little bit better. Ouch. Doesn't seem to be any power ups here. I wonder if I try to destroy some of those uh, objects he's throwing at me, if they'll have the force jars in them. Or whatever they're called. It's gonna be a while. Definitely, if they wanted to have the most epic boss duel of any of these games, this is the most epic of all of them yet. Ouch. Oh, thank you. It's nice when your uh, old man gives you encouragement. <laughs> yep, they do have force power-ups. That is much appreciated. Smokes, this guy's tough. I don't think I've even gotten to the hardest part of the duel yet. I think, um, if I'm remembering right, the final part, none of these are dropping... Oh, there was a force power up there. Um, the final part of the duel is him swinging away at you with his lightsaber while he's throwing all the objects at you. And it's cool that you can't use your blaster against him, even if you have the most powerful upgraded blaster. You have to use the lightsaber at this point. Almost there. Well, this is a better way of dealing with these things than just blocking them. Using the... ouch. I need more force here. There we go. That's more of the rhythm I... I had back in the day when he lands, get two strikes in. And here we go. So. Now he's throwing stuff at you while he's attacking you with a lightsaber. Which makes it a little more challenging. Ouch! Yeah, 
I do I really do feel like Luke in the movie when he's just being bombarded by this stuff. And getting tired. It's a lot of force. Got him. Whew. Troubled by the uncertain fate of Han Solo, the rebels narrowly escape the Imperial forces on Bespin and rejoin the rebel fleet. And that's it. Congratulations, young Jedi. You have beaten the evil Imperial Lord Darth Vader, master of the dark side. You have escaped from the clutches of the Empire with your friends, Princess Leia, Chewbacca, Lando, Calrissian, C-3PO, and R2-D2. You have learned much about the Force, and it is strong with you. Soon you will be a true Jedi Knight, but first, you must complete your training with Yoda and overcome your fears by facing Vader again. The Super Nest Saga and battle against the Empire continues in Super Return of the Jedi. Didn't see that name coming. Where you must rescue your friend Han Solo from the slimy job of the hut and confront Vader and the Emperor himself. Remember, the Force is with you. Always. So just like the movie, kind of a bittersweet ending to the game, too. You do defeat Vader. I guess they couldn't have Vader cutting your hand off. It'd be funny if they did that animation with the little hand and the lightsaber flying off and Luke. Uh, that could have been like an extra final little level of Luke dropping down, collecting those coins again. Um, and then I guess you got to land on the Falcon and get away. Maybe one more Falcon level uh, of flying away, escaping the TIE Fighters. Uh, but the game is already long enough, so... I'm fine with it ending where it did, and we get a picture of Yoda coming in through the stars in the background. So that's Super Empire Strikes Back, one of my favorite video games of all time, not just for the Super Nintendo, but of all time, because I love the first one so much, and this just built on it, improved on it. So many awesome levels, the Hoth battle, roping the AT-AT walkers, special thanks to Uncle George. Always got to thank Uncle George. So I hope you had fun watching this. I had a lot of fun playing it again. And on Patreon, there's going to be an exclusive version of this playthrough with no commentary. No me yakking all the way through. So you can just, on Patreon, watch the game itself with the sound effects and music recorded directly from the game. Uh, big thanks to all the patrons supporting the channel. And until the Super Return of the Jedi playthrough, may the Force be with you, and Nerdmas Day.